Okay, I think that that looks right. Um, so I'm I'm T.J. Allenbaugh. Um, my co-presenter uh, today is Yuan Chu, um, who I think should be uh, on Zoom, um, and maybe will just be a disembodied voice through the speakers. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, um, but we'll see if his audio is uh, working here in a minute. But uh, yeah, I'm really grateful to have uh, a co-presenter here. Hopefully, what we want to show today is looking at a single problem that occurs in two different contexts and hopefully moving in a path forward that allows us both to, to solve our problem. So it's nice to be able to, to see the two different contexts here. So um, you want to, uh, if, are you there? Hello. Hello. Oh, okay, great. Um, so yeah, uh, you want to, why don't you just uh, take it away and then I'll be the button pusher for the slides. All right, great. Yeah, I see this uh, title looks slightly different. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm Yuan Chu, and uh, I'll be talking about memory overcommit in containerized environments with TJ. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, oh, discover playlists. <laughs> OK, uh, there we go. Yes. Right, so for both clients and servers, workloads can be containerized with uh, VMs, Kubernetes containers, MemCGs, and the workloads differ between clients and servers. The, uh, the client's jobs are more bursty and unpredictable since they react to user interaction and the systems need to respond quickly to interesting events and be aware of energy usage. And the server jobs have a more predictable memory footprint, and they're concerned with stability and performance. A common technique is proactive reclaim, where, uh, where it reclaims memory ahead of memory pressure, and it makes apparent the amount of actually free memory on the machine. So some client use cases can include a virtualized OS on a desktop and tablets, or isolated execution environments for security. And the data and the servers are more concerned about um, SLOs for different availability tiers, uh, proactive reclaim, like I said before, and demotion promotion between tiers. Next slide, please. So to view this problem of overcommitted memory, uh, we, we want to introduce the concept of working set as a histogram. Um, so this working set idea is a binning of pages by time or coldness, something like that. And each bin contains a page count. Uh, the diagram on the right uh, you can see that the bottom two arrows there, they say idle age intervals, so all the pages in the particular bin are considered idle for some time between two adjacent interval values. And this could be the active inactive LRU split, the MGLRU generations, or access frequency for daemon, or uh, even estimated through user space. Uh, so in the system we're, we're presenting today, we collect the working set in the guest or the MemCG hierarchy for a better estimation of memory utilization inside containers. This is generated on demand from reclaim activity or queried by the controller and we use the balloon device to send the working set to the host, which enables the host to make balloon size decisions for each guest. Next slide, please. Right. So for containerized workloads, the data center and client use cases are quite similar. In both cases, we kind of have a controller listening for events, maybe once in a while probing the containers and VMs, 
and based on the information they receive, it implements policy decisions. So on the left-hand side, we show the data center use case. Say we have three jobs, and the one on the right is a best effort job that may use some free capacity. But if a latency sensitive job goes into reclaim, the management daemon receives a working set report. It can shrink the latency tolerant job based on the report. It can also try to um kill the best effort job if its working set can no longer be kept resident. So the core piece of the puzzle here is the working set report for setting the precise values of the limits. And a very similar story happens with the overcommitted clients where multiple VMs share need to share fairly the system's limited resources. Uh, a fair sharing policy can be employed based on the oldest pages in each VM's working set report, but TJ will talk more about that. Uh, yeah, so the use case, just to highlight on the right-hand side, um, being the client side use case, might have uh, a slightly different or uh, additional complexity, which is that oftentimes there's you know, a significant uh, host application happening too that the user cares about uh, doing some kind of native application um, in addition to the virtualized, uh, uh, virtualized applications. Um, and the user might be going back and forth um, between these different contexts um, to do uh, useful activity. Uh, again, maybe you know, running uh, an important application that's only available on a Windows environment that you want to run virtualized, for example. Um, I think the thing that is the same about these two contexts is that there is the limited memory resource that the utilization of that, of that resource is necessarily isolated. The information about how that resource is being used is isolated by the constraints of the system. And so we seek to find some way to uh, get the global picture of the utilization of the memory. Um, and so the right-hand side, we would propose to do that through uh, extending the balloon device, which I'll just um, give some more detail about. So uh, this slide really shows two different components uh, to accomplish the goal of getting the data from, uh, you know, from the guest to the host. The first component is the notification system of some kind um, that you want to mention, uh, where we get notified from within the kernel uh, that a new working set is, uh, a working set report is available. Uh, you can think of this as analogous to like a shrinker, the shrinker interface, where a component of the kernel, and in our case, the balloon driver, is uh, a client of this interface. Um, and we kind of show it as a pub sub sort of uh, interface where you subscribe to these notifications and then uh, in our implementation and during background reclaim activities, you can get notified of uh, that a new report is available. Uh, and so the balloon driver will receive that notification and then uh, the second component is that we extend the capability of the balloon driver to report this out, this information out back to the device. Um, and then after that, uh, there is typically in a VMM, there's a uh, specific uh, functionality specific to that VMM that allows a host controller program to uh, you know, get this information. So in QEMU, um, this is known as QMP or uh, the QEMU machine protocol that uh, would communicate this information over a socket to uh, some listening program. Um, and other VMMs have similar functionality. Uh, CrossVM, for example, has uh, a similar capability. Uh, yeah. So uh, then just to mention the host controller's um, responsibilities here, uh, that uh, in, in whether you're in the uppercase or the lowercase, 
Um, sorry, I just lost control here a little bit. There we go. Uh, so the, these controllers uh, then uh, receive the signals and then they give control inputs to the system. Um, and those uh, control inputs, you know, in the, in the upper case would be uh, setting MemCG limits or uh, driving reclaim for a particular MemCG. Uh, for the bottom case, of course, we, um, uh, you know, our control input is uh, changing the balloon size. Uh, and then getting this information or also the ability to query for this information, um, allow, uh, it gives you the information and, and then you can uh, implement a policy um, for these adjustments. Um, there's obviously gonna be some notion of fairness even if it's just implied um, because there is a limited resource. Uh, for the uh, client side use case, we have to be very um, adaptable to what the user might be doing at any moment. Um, but of course, for more of the data center use, use case, we might be able to use historical data to inform uh, that policy. Uh, so uh, but maybe now is a good time to see if there's any, um, uh, any questions um, before I move on to the next part. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, just a question on the on the report part. Like, um, uh, Virtual Balloon already has like a mechanism to report statistics to the hypervisor. Uh, couldn't you simply like extend that? That you like just always include whatever working set size, and you just have have the hypervisor pull 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 that on a regular interval. Uh, it, yeah, I think it would be possible to extend the stats feature potentially. Um, let me just go back to that slide and, and talk a little bit about it. Um, you know, the, the main thing about the stats feature, right, is uh, the first thing you do is, is set your polling interval, and then the system begins to, to report. Uh, and so the benefit here, especially as you expand to multiple VMs, is a signal-based uh, signal system uh, during reclaim activities. Um, and so, that you could imagine uh, that as a kernel feature and then that as the driver of your uh, stats reporting as opposed to a polling um, and so maybe extending that way. Uh, there's another component of this um, that could fit inside stats maybe um, and that is this um, thresholding rate limiting that we do so that um, if there's a lot of reclaim, we're not blasting huge amounts of, of messages through the system. So that's uh, known as a reporting threshold in, in the system. And the other thing that happens is, um, again, in these multi-VM systems, if you've just generated maybe some background reclaim activity happened and you just generated a new report and then immediately afterwards you get queried, um, you want to have some notion of the staleness of, of that report that's allowed. So again, you're not generating uh, additional work. So those two features are a piece of the system that is part of how you configure um, this, what, what we made here. Um, and you configure it on the host through the SysFS, and then it's part of um, this expansion of the balloon that we would propose. Um, so I, I think that, that you could expand stats to uh, in, in include this. Um, but the way that we did it right now as an RFC proposal is to talk about it as a separate thing and see what the community thinks. Um, yeah, and, and proceed in the conversation that way. So yeah, I don't think it's very crazy to have that. I mean, of course, the other question is if you could then just have like some other QMU guest agent in the guest push that on demand to your hypervisor. I mean, there are various ways to communicate that. It's just a question what the right interface is, so right uh, notification mechanism. Oh, uh, in terms of like a VSOC or something like that? Yeah, for example. Like, I mean. uh, yes, that, that would be uh, a, a possible um, solution. It seems there's benefits in terms of uh, 
globally uh, useful thing to have something that just works out of the box for everyone. Um, so that is how we've gone so far. But um, yeah, I guess the main thing to say is that, you know, we, we uh, I'm actually not sure if I haven't had a chance to uh, ask you on if he's posted the patches yet, but we, we have these um, uh, patches that we would like to, to have people um, give some comments on. Um, so just a word about that. Uh, yeah, so there's there's two patches um, that describe this in, or show what we have so far. Um, and the kernel patch is actual changes to uh, have this feature that we call working set reporting. Um, and then the uh, second patch um, is for the actual driver changes itself. Um, and then we also have the QMU implementation. Um, RFC that uh, is actually not out yet, but I'll um, send in the next couple days. Um, and then the cross VM balloon actually already uh, implements um, a form of this, um, which is available uh, right now. Uh, and then for people who are on the VertIO uh, mailing list, um, we also describe um, the spec edition, which is essentially this configuration, uh, you know, sending the configuration information, and then uh, getting the reports back out, specifying the bins and, and how bin sizes and changing those and all of the many details um, that are necessary for that um, kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, the, then we just, um, you know, you want you kind of refer to this that you can have various kinds of um, balloon policies. Um, we'll, we'll be releasing, uh, a basic script that shows a, a basic policy that how, how you can implement um, a basic policy with this uh, unified uh, working set information and how you can drive um, basically an auto balloon kind of feature um, through this to uh, to to not have to, uh, to to make it very simple to control balloons um, in a in a multi VM scenario. Uh, so, uh, you want to? I don't know. Did you have any additional um, comments or? Uh, no, not really. I'm also uh, just doing some final touch-ups on the kernel patches as well, and then we'll be posting those in the in the next day or two. Yeah. Um, one one final note about you know the different because the balloon features there are a number of uh, balloon features. There's uh, free page reporting is another option that you could imagine to help solve this problem. Um, one of the things that we have at least on the client side application, and I haven't spoken with you want you in detail about this, but we have a lot of situations where there's significant page cache in the the VM itself. So the number of free pages reported is actually not that large. Um, and so another solution that people proceed down this path is um, sometimes people call it a balloon pulsing uh, solution where they inflate the balloon to drive reclaim and then they pulse it back down. So hopefully that you now get to report in fact that you have a lot of free pages. Um, and again, I, I think for the data center case that might uh, yield some, I think people do yield some wins with that. Um, for our case with the user, um, we're very sensitive to user perceived latency. And so we, again, prefer like a, a signal-based situation where we can respond very quickly to what um, a user is doing. And so we proceeded down the path of, of trying to do a signal-based uh, system. Uh, so that's, that's really, um, I think that's everything I was planning to go through. Does anyone have any additional questions or? So I can just add something. So I'm 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 not a friend of auto ballooning. If, if you ask me, I'm, I maintain vertical balloon. I I don't like balloon inflation deflation. It's the worst. Uh, I can understand why people do it because it's always been done like that. But what I think would be better in the long term is if you would be using free page reporting to report free pages. But in addition, some way to to tell your guest VM to limit the size of its working set, meaning that you set some kind of a, like, you would say, well, dear Linux, you have like four gigabytes of memory, but please only try to use two gigabytes of it, something like that. And if the VM then 
like runs into some out of memory situations, you can say, yeah, well, but if you need more instead of just randomly crashing, like we've seen for auto ballooning, just like exceed that and report report me an update that you need more memory desperately. Because like with auto ballooning, you sometimes you can really run into these situations where you suddenly have a workload that consumes a lot of memory in your VM, whatever like uh, policies you have they're too slow so you have your guest applications crashing your customer will not be happy which is why auto ballooning is usually not used nowadays anymore so mm. just like to give you a, like an, an idea what to do and i mean it would still fit into the whole picture of the working set size just that you do you use a different mechanism to actually put some memory pressure on the on the guest without causing too much harm with the mm. So the idea being that, uh, yeah, I, re I recall your comment from the from the mailing list, um, and uh, essentially one part of this is uh, in you'll see in the spec change is what we would call a notification uh, vert queue, where uh, in this case the, there's really only two notifications. One uh, so far, one is uh, a configuration notification. The device is now. Uh, has a message for you of how you would like to, how we would like to configure the working set reporting, um, and then the second notification right now is uh, requesting a, a working set report. Um, so uh, one of the things that we'd speculated on is is an additional uh, notification of some kind of of this nature of saying. Um, uh, this is uh, we would like you to uh, stay within this allocation or or something like that. Um, th that w w hasn't been a part of what we're what we've done yet, but uh, I, I see your point for sure. Oh yeah. Hi, uh, I'm just wondering how this could scale to like a pooled memory type use case. Like, do you, do you see the working set as something that could be passed? externally and be like a per node in, instead of per process or per VM being a per node metric that's provided up to like an orchestrator that's going to decide to migrate a VM or move a, move a workload or something like that. Mm. Uh, well, one of the things in that's part of the patch, um, the RFC that you want to is focused on is basically implementing this for, um, hierarchically for, um, you know, uh, MemCG uh, V2. Um, and so you have to find some way of of, um, of hierarchically allocating these bins. So if you have two sub MemCGs that have a, a working set, and then the parent MemCG needs to understand that you have to aggregate, right? Um, and so I could imagine a similar, you would do a similar kind of operation, I, I would think, um, to sort of aggregate the working sets, um, especially let's say people have chosen different binnings and how do you properly, you know, aggregate um, up the bins, um, that that kind of thing. So, it seems to me I, I haven't thought very much about that. That was you. Want, I don't know. You want to? Do you have a comment about that? Uh, I, when you're talking about nodes, are you referring to machines or NUMA nodes? Right, machine like one CPU, or oh. one honestly one root port. When it comes to when you're talking about. CXL pooling, CXL based pooling, it's a root port. Uh, it's not even necessarily, like the CXL plane doesn't have a good concept for which root ports are part of a multi socket system or, or, or whatever. But basically, having a layer above just sort of process management within one, uh, one kernel uh, in, in instance, basically. Well, I mean, the working set would certainly tell you, you know, there's not very much hot memory on, you know, this, wh however you want to talk about whatever system you have. Right. And there's a lot of hot memory over here and not very much over here. Um, and then you could presumably make some kind of decision, um, uh, you know, about that. Um, yeah, and I remember in the previous talk about um, this idea of like, Oh, there, there could be many VMs with m a lot of hot memory, and you know we sold everyone these VMs and this much right. memory, but we know that they're not going to use it. But we actually uh, this user or this set of users um, is right now using a lot of memory right now and could 
exceed our model of how we've set things up. Yes. Right. Uh, right. So, so this kind of is a kind of system that would allow you to detect that, right. and then maybe make some decision um, so that you can maintain your, you know, your SLA. Yeah. Because it and it's it's not unlike your comment about the server use case, where you need to juggle these VMs, but the VM, the VMs might not be the most important thing on the host. There's there are other things going on, so you need this broader sense of context and it's actually a thought that occurred when there was discussion about handing that information over to the user space well you could have an application say in absolute terms this is the kind of memory i want but what else is going on maybe that's important to the application but it's not important to that particular use case or deployment right it's it's all it's a, it needs to be done in relative terms so that you know there there needs to be one single entity that understands the actual priority list. Uh, right, yeah. I mean, this is, uh, again, you know, this driver of trying to construct global knowledge when yes, you have necessarily right. isolated it because of the constraints of your system. Um, so that is, that, that's probably the most succinct way of saying what it is we're, we're trying to do. Right. Thanks. Okay, well, thanks very much. Uh, and also, thank you, Yuan Chu. <laughs>